to talk just for a few minutes from the subject as we work our Advent theme guided by Christmas. I want to put a tag on this text this morning and talk from the subject, led by a dream. Okay. Led by a dream. There is, in the words of the diviner from Detroit, a scathing criticism of the Richard Nixon administration in the early 70s. Stevie Wonder wrote a song entitled, You Haven't Done Nothing. It was the one in which the young Jackson 5, you know, when Michael was black, that Jackson 5, <laughs> was on the album and they sang at the end, do the walk. Y'all remember that, do the walk? There is a line in that, in that song, you haven't done nothing, that says, we care not to wake up to the nightmare that has become real life. We know. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. How many glad to be in worship one more time? Amen. We come to give God glory and give God praise, and we invite you to come on and share with us. Amen. As we worship our Lord, our Savior, in the season of Advent, we're waiting His coming. Amen. By the Lord, He is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures for all generations. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Shout out to God with a voice of triumph. We invite you to stand on your feet if you like to. We come to give God praise. It's a simple praise song that says, Lord, you are good and your mercy. Lord, you are good and your mercy. Do it forever. Lord, you are good, say. Come on, set it in, set it in. Set it one more time, Lord, you are good. Here we go, people from every nation. People from every nation. From generation to generation. Generation, we worship you. Hallelujah. Somebody come to worship him on this morning. For who you are. You are the king. You are the Ah, come on and bless him. He's a mighty good God. He's worthy of our worship. Hallelujah. Come on, here we go. Lord, you are good, king. Lord, you are good at your mercy. Come on, Zion, open up your mouth and give God praise. Blow the trumpet and Zion, say, Lord, you are good. Come on, say it. People from every nation, say, 
from generation to generation. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, he's in the room right now. Come on. We give you praise. We worship you. Hey. Come on, you are good. Say, you are good. All the time, all the time. You are good. You are good. All the time. All the time. All the time. Come on, give a praise, give a worship. Shout out to Zion! Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. My, my, my. Somebody come to give him glory on this morning. Come on, say it one more time. Lord, you are good. Give me up. People from every nation say. People from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, say. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey. For who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you. For who you are. For who you are, sir. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on. He's the great shepherd. Hallelujah. He's Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Who you are. Who you are. Come on, say it one more time. For who you are. You are good. You are good.
Amen. And on this morning, we light the candle of love. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. Amen. And Jesus so loved us that he said only love allowed him to lay down his life for a friend. Amen. And that's all of us. So this morning, we relight the candle of love and of hope and of love on today. before you this morning and the first thing we want to do is to say thank you yes, if there is any time of year that we just can't give you enough thanks and praise it's during the christmas season god we are so grateful that you came and walked among us god we are grateful that you walked with us god we are grateful that you brought joy to this world god and today we come to acknowledge you, to worship you, to glorify your name today, God. And we invite you into this service to have your way, God. We want to serve and worship and adore you on this morning, God. So we invite you to have complete control of everything that takes place in this service, God. We invite you to take control of the musicians and the choir and the ushers and the preaching and let everything bring glory to your name. God, we just want to be recipients of your presence this morning that when we leave out of this place, God, we will be a little different from how we came in here, God. We want to be changed and made new, God, and we know that that is only possible through your spirit being in this place, God, and we know that when your spirit shows up, God, it shows up to do a work, God, so in the midst of being here, God, touch lives and save and heal and deliver and set free as only you can God and we will make sure that your name is the only name that's given all of the glory and all of the honor for all of the credit it all belongs to you oh God we love you on today God it is in the matchless name of our of your son our savior that we lift this prayer God and because we know you to be a faithful God we count it all done in the name of Jesus, all of us who love you, God, we scream out, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we give God some more praise in this place? Amen, amen. And we're going to ask now if you will stand to your feet because it, at second Sunday is a Sunday we reserve for our young people to lead us in worship. And right now, one of our Boy Scouts is going to come and read scripture for us. So we need everybody to stand to your feet as Isaiah Wright comes to read our scripture. Amen. Can you give God a hand clap of praise as he comes to read? I think we can do a little bit better than that, Mount Olive. Amen. Amen. Joel chapter 2 verses 25 to 29. Amen. If you would like to read it on the screens, you may, and if you would like to read it through the Bible, you can. I will repay to you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, the cutter, my great army which I sent among against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. And you shall know that I am this of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God. And there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, even on male and female slaves. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. Amen. Amen. This is the word, this is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen.
we invite you to stand with us as we sing our opening hymn walk in the light you'll find those words on our screen this morning let's all stand to our feet amen Let's start with that chorus right there. Walk in the light, man. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Come where the new God. Where the mercy Shine all around the sand. Why don't you say it one more time? Walk in the light. Walk Where the dew drops. Oh Jesus. One line hung the hell service. 
The usher will give you a packet. Please fill it out and return it to us. We also want to welcome those who are worshiping us over the internet. We hope you enjoy the service. Let us all stand and greet one another.
in this journey of life, there's a winding road, mountains high and valleys low. Though the road ahead may be unknown, I am focused on the price that's worth pressing for. I will be what you've called me to be. I'll say
sure will say yeah. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. I agree. I agree. I'm gonna follow the way. Yeah. I say. starting points, you're considering ending points. Because when you want to be what God wants you to be, you start out here. That may not look like much. That may not be much. But when you get to where God wants you to be, the writer in the book says, I shall come forward like pure gold. I'm willing to learn to go the process of transformation. Thank you, choir, for leading us to this moment. We thank our young people for allowing God to use them to participate in worship today. And we are thankful for all of our guests, but we are especially delighted to have the most recent debutante class of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated visiting with us today. All of the sisters from AKA and the future sisters from AKA are with us today. We thank God for your presence. Let me take my text so that we can move forward. Today I want us to look at the gospel according to Matthew. And there in chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, we'll find our text for today. Let us stand all who can and will to give reverence to the word of God as we consider the first canonical gospel, the gospel according to Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Hear now 
the reading of God's word. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the living God. I want to talk just for a few minutes from the subject as we work our Advent theme guided by Christmas. I want to put a tag on this text this morning and talk from the subject, led by a dream. Okay. Okay. Led by a dream. There is, in the words of the diviner from Detroit, a scathing criticism of the Richard Nixon administration in the early 70s. Stevie Wonder wrote a song entitled, You Haven't Done Nothing. It was the one in which the young Jackson 5, you know, when Michael was black, that Jackson 5, <laughs> was on the album and they sang at the end, do the walk. Y'all remember that, do the walk? There is a line in that, in that song, You Haven't Done Nothing, that says, we care not to wake up to the nightmare that has become real life. We know that nightmares are disturbing dreams, troublesome realities at the level of the subconscious. And most of us have been taught that when we are terrorized by our dreams, all we have to do is wake up. But sometimes, beloved, waking up doesn't solve the terror of the dream. Sometimes, as Stevie forecasted, our nightmares do become real life. And some of us might even say under this current administration, we are living in a nightmarish reality. It seems as if everything that can go wrong is going wrong. The, 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 the discourse among nations is breaking down into war. Uh, scandal upon scandal is being revealed in the news media, in the halls of Congress, and in entertainment. And we find that there are still murderers on the loose, rapists on the loose, folks being sold into slavery for sexual, perverted sexual behaviors. Anything that can go wrong seems to be going wrong with our world. It is a nightmarish reality. And beloved, it is a nightmare that waking up just doesn't seem to solve. That's where uh, Joseph in the text finds himself. He's living a nightmare. The worst thing imaginable has gone wrong. A young betrothed couple intended to be married after the year-long engagement in a period now has a troubling fact and factor to be dealt with. Joseph hears these words from his darling Mary, Joe, I'm with child. It is a scandal. It is something that rocks him to its core. It is the nightmare that keeps on terrorizing him even by day. Beloved, sometimes life brings us to the moments where all that could we could imagine goes wrong will indeed go wrong. 
But there is some good news in the text for just as the Bible says of Joseph, he had made a decision to handle the scandal in a righteous and just manner. But he was going to divorce her, not in a public spectacle, but in a private affair so that she would not be publicly disgraced. And the Bible says that before he pulled the trigger on his actions, he went to sleep. And when he went to sleep, uh, the Bible says he had a revelation, a visitation from an angelic messenger. Can I just pause parenthetically here to hip you to some few realities that might help you on your way when you have to make some serious decisions? Every now and then you ought to sleep on them. You ought not make hasty decisions. You ought not just leave things in a hurry. But sometimes you ought to cool your jets and slow your roll and sleep on it for the night. For the Bible says that when he went to sleep, just when he was about to do the righteous and just thing, an angel appeared to him and said to him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child that she has conceived is of the Holy Spirit. Take her to be your wife, and she shall bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Every now and then, beloved, we are all confronted with nightmarish realities, but we thank God that there is a just win moment. Just when you are about to throw in the towel. Just when you are about to give up. Just when you are about to throw your hands in the air. Just when you are about to say, I don't care anymore. Just when you are about to leave it. Just when you are about to say no to the pain, the problems any longer. God steps in. And the Bible says that before Joseph could execute his plan, he had a dream. Dreams are those peculiar phenomenon of REM sleep. They are the phenomenon of sleep, and they are a way of God communicating with his people. Just imagine had Joseph not gone to sleep, he would have missed out on participating in God's perfect plan for his life. Thank God for dreams. For our dreams give us a sense of a future and a hope and a way out of our dilemmas. Praise God for dreams. And whenever people cease to dream, when we lose our capacity to look beyond our present, to envision and foresee another reality, then there is a death and dearth to life when people lose hope and can no longer dream. And when we look at our world, beloved, one of the things that I am most afraid of as our democracy breaks down is that we no longer have the capacity as a people to dream. When you lose your dreams, you lose your way. When you lose your dreams, you lose all hope. When we become a helpless people, then we be, when we become a hopeless people, we become a helpless people. For our dreams are from God. They're God's gift to you. So keep on dreaming. For dreams are not grounded in present. They are things of the future. Dream, even though it looks like the dream will never come true. Dream, even though there may be hostile uh, predicaments against your dreams. Dream, even though you don't have the money. Dream, even though you don't have the present wherewithal. Dream, because when you stop dreaming, you start dying. Dreams are from God, but dreams, beloved, lead us toward God. And when we participate God with God in the fulfillment of dreams, we are moving closer and closer to the divine present and purpose for which all of us have been brought here to the face of the planet. Your dreams, I tell you, have power. And you ought not ever underestimate the power of your dreams. 
for dreams have a few things here that I want to flush out in the text. For the Bible says that when, when Joseph was asleep, the angel came to him in a dream and said, Fear not, take her, for you are Joseph, the son of David. And the child shall be born, you shall name him Jesus in fulfillment of the scripture which says, Look, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and they shall indeed call his name Emmanuel. And the Bible says here that the dreams have power. One of the things that I see that I noticed first about the power of our dreams is that we have a name in the nightmare. Uh, yes, Joseph is confronted with a nightmarish situation. But when the angel addresses him, he addresses him and reminds him of his name. Joseph, you are a son of David. Many of us, when we have to transpire when we have to exist in nightmarish realities we try to do everything by ourselves and we suffer in silence and we lose ourselves in the problem and we lose ourselves to the problem and when we lose ourselves to the problem then the problem becomes our name how many people do you know that will that will admit i'm depressed i'm burdened I'm lonely, I'm sick, I'm powerless, I'm broke, I'm a victim. But when you've got a dream, you are reminded of who you are in your predicament. For the angel says, your name is Joseph. And Joseph in Hebrew means, may God give the increase. Yeah, you got a name in your nightmare that no matter how bad it is, God can give you increase. You're more than your predicament. You're more than your problem. You're more than your present reality. You're more than your situation. You're more than your circumstance. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them that I am a child of God. Not only is Joseph reminded that he has a name, but that he comes from a people with a name. Joseph, you are the one that God will give increase, but Joseph, you are also a son of David. That just is not a mere uh, genealogical link to the preceding verses in which the, the genealogy of the family tree of Jesus is laid out through some 42 generations. But what the writer Matthew is also hinting at us is that when you look at the ancestors in the lineage of the past, none of them are perfect people. But through their imperfections, God was at work. Look here at who they lift up. David, who is by all accounts a man after God's own heart. But David could also be the chief sinner in Israel. Amen. David was the one who stole another man's wife. David was the one who had a baby out of wedlock. David is the one who had a census that was not called for. David is the one that moved the Ark of the Covenant when it wasn't supposed to be moved. And God didn't want it to be moved. But yet God still worked in David's life. David's family life was all in smatters and tatters. But God worked in his life. And beloved, when you realize not only who you are, but who you are, you will quickly understand that God has always been working in your lineage. God has been working from generation unto generation. No wonder Moses said, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou had formed the earth and the world. Thanks be to God that when I look at the fruit on my family tree, I'm reminded that there are bootleggers and, and wine bibbers, but praise be to God. God knows how to get in the nooks and crannies of human in existence and work it out you got a name that means something since we've gotten back from Israel I've had jet lag and so I've been getting up at one o'clock in the morning and the other day I couldn't go back to sleep so I started channel surfing and I watched four consecutive 
episodes of the original roots. And I'm reminded of how consistent and persistent Kunta Kinte was in maintaining his identity when his captors imposed a westernized name upon him. He insisted that his name was not Toby, but Kunta Kinte. You see, beloved, what he was really doing and really saying to his enslavers, I may be enslaved, but I'm not a slave because I know exactly who I am. You can change my situation, but you can't ever change who I am because that belongs between me and God. And beloved, when you find yourself in some nightmarish realities, all you got to do is remember that you have a name in your nightmare. That's the power of your dream. The second thing that dreams provide for us is they allow and allot for participation, not separation, in God's plan. God's plans are often revealed in dreams. And since God's ways are not our ways, God's ways can look awfully confusing, awfully foolish, and awfully um, imprudent. But when you've got a dream, you realize that I'm in partnership with God. And I had better participate rather than separate from God's plan. Here, God is calling upon Joseph to be a surrogate father, a one who will step in and provide the necessary paternal influence that Jesus will need during the years of his growth and maturation. Joseph, by saying yes, as the choir just sung, is essentially saying, I want to be everything that God wants me to be. And beloved, can I just put you on blast this morning that that ought to be every child of God's desire. Too many times we're asking for this and that. We want promotions, we want uplift, we want greater this or that. But at what time in your life have you prayed, God, I really want to be what you want me to be? I, I'm not looking for uh, some new clothes. I just want to be clothed in your righteousness alone. I, I'm not looking for some more money, but I'm rich as can be with my Savior, I see. I'm not trying to ask you for something, but I really want to be more intimate with you. And you can only do that when you've got a dream. Dreams allow us to partner with the divine. And thirdly, beloved, dreams move us from selfishness to selflessness. Here, Joseph is concerned with his reputation, his stature, and his standing in the community. His ego as a man has been wounded and shattered. But here, Joseph moves from selfishness to selflessness. He is willing to put this problem behind him in a just and quiet manner. Many of us have to realize that our dreams are not just about us. That's right. But they are indeed God's gifts to us so that we might be gifts to other people. Amen. Amen. One of the things my father told me when I went away to college was, son, this community has nurtured you. We want you and expect you to do well. Make us proud. Be mindful that you represent us and you represent your family. But I'm not just sending you to school so that you can get a good job. I'm not just sending you to school so you can provide for yourself. I'm not sending you to school so that you can merely be a viable entity in your community. I'm sending you to school for you to learn something so you can help somebody as you pass along. And beloved, it's not about you. 
God's dream for your life is not just so you can get another car, another house, a bigger home, but no, God's blessing is so that you can help somebody as you pass along and bring them closer to Jesus Christ. It's not about your selfie, but it's about being self-centered in Jesus Christ. And then lastly, beloved, your dreams have a power in that they afford us the opportunity to name our destiny above our dilemma. Amen. Here, Joseph finds himself in a rather cruel predicament. A baby is being expected and it's not even his. The wife, the intended wife, the fiance, is pregnant by another entity beyond his control and his capacity. It's a cruel joke of fate. But here the angel tells him, Joseph, I want you to do something. When the baby comes forth, you get to name it. Y'all ain't feeling it. You name it. It ain't yours, but you name it. He's not yours. He belongs to God, but you name it. Uh, he's not even going to, 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 to be around very long in terms of longevity, but you name it. And beloved, when you find yourself in a dilemma, look at your dreams because your dreams will tell you your destiny. You shall name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. In other words, Joseph... The one that you need is the one that's going to save you. Right. The one that you name is the one that will liberate you and redeem you and lift you. So you are essentially naming your own destiny. How many of us ever dare to name our destinies? Yes, every now and then, beloved, you got to dare to name your destiny. I know you might be broke, but you can say I'm wealthy. Because I've got all of the things that matter. I may not have a network of friends, but I'm not lonely. Because I've got a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I may not have a silver spoon in my mouth. But God provides everything that I need. At every turn of my existence. No, I'm going to name my reality. I may not be wealthy. But I'm not bankrupt because I've got everything that really matters. The power of your dream is that it affords you the opportunity to name your destiny. Beloved, you better be careful what you name it. Because whatever you name it is what it's going to be. Be careful. Sometimes your hardships are really your blessings. Sometimes your setbacks are really your setups. Sometimes your miscues are really God's way of bringing you to masterpieces. Yes, you got to be careful of what you name your destiny. Here you, she shall bring forth a boy and you shall name him Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. For when you are reminded of that name, you are reminded that God is with us. Amen. Can't you see it here, beloved? Joseph wakes up from his dream and he is empowered to name his destiny. He's empowered to participate in God's perfect plan. He's reminded of who he is and the, and the power of his ancestral lineage. And he moves from selfishness to selflessness. And the Bible says that he woke up and he did not, he did as the angel had commanded. And because he was a just man, he even went a step further. He had no marital relations with her until she had brought forth the child, so that there was no mistake who baby in his ears. And he named him Jesus. 
and because Jesus was just like any other little baby but special at his birth, he demanded all of the care and attention that every baby demands. Mm -hmm. And as he matured, I imagine Joseph called his name on numerous occasions. At the 2 a.m. feeding, Jesus. Why you gotta get up so early? When he masked up his diapers and Mary needed a few extra winks of sleep, Jesus. These diapers are sure smelly. When Jesus uh, got old enough to crawl, Jesus, don't touch that. Jesus, that's hot. Jesus, don't walk that way. He did everything that he was supposed to do as a surrogate father. For in his naming of Jesus, he designated his character and his purpose. For he shall save his people from their sins. And God is with us. Every day Joseph spent with Jesus. He called his name. He raised him as his own son. He taught him a trade. He disciplined him when needed. He spent every day with Jesus just because of a dream. And every time he called his name, no matter the circumstance, he had to be reminded that God will save his people from their sins and that Emmanuel, God, is with us. And I need you to know that every time you call that name, you are reminded that God is with us. When the doctors say, I can't do anymore, and you cry, Jesus, you just said, God is with me. On 495 and 395 and 295 and 95, when somebody cuts you off and you cry, Jesus, you just reminded yourself that God is with us. When your paycheck is a little short and your bills are long and you call on the name of Jesus, you just reminded yourself, God is with us. Have you ever tried him? Have you ever called on that name? For there's still power in that name. There's joy in that name. There's peace in that name. There's purpose in that name. There's rebounding power in that name. Have you ever called him? I dare you. I double dog dare you. That when you find yourself in trouble, there is a name above every name that I love to call. Uh, I love to sing its word, but it sounds like music in my ears. The sweetest name on earth. Oh! Sometimes you don't know how to put it in words. You just gotta say, oh! How I love Jesus. Oh! That is a name. Oh! That'll turn back cancer. Oh! There's a name that'll make your enemies your footstool. Oh, there's a name that'll give you strength for your struggle. Oh, there's a name that will kill cancer. Oh, how sweet the name. Heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. But there's something. Do I have a witness? There's something. I don't know what it is. There's something about that name. Jesus. 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 You ought to get happy right now. Jesus. Jesus. Say it with me. Jesus. I'm reminded that God is with us. And with us indeed there may be somebody here today that needs to call on that great name Jesus the name that is above every name Jesus Joseph was led by a dream to develop a greater intimate relationship with Jesus. What about you? Do your dreams 
reveal God's desire for your life? Or have you come to the moment where your nightmares are greater than your dreams? The Bible says that Joseph woke up. You got to stay woke. And if we are awake, then we can live out fully God's plans for our lives. If there's someone here today that's had a dream, a dream you thought would never come to pass, a dream that you thought was so far-fetched that it wasn't really for you, or maybe there's someone with a dream that has long since died due to age, disability, a dream that seems so implausible and impractical that God would never want that of me. Keep your dreams alive, for they lead us to a greater intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. If there's someone in the house today that wants to dare to dream in partnership with God in your life, then we invite you in this moment to come and surrender all that you are to the living being of Christ and allow him to transform you in this moment. There may be someone here today that desires a greater intimate relationship with God through the body of Christ and you have no church home but you are needing a group, a community by which you can ground yourself. Then we invite you to Mount Olive and extend the invitation for you to join us here. We are in no way a perfect people but we are a people being perfected by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are here and you would like to unite with the Mount Olive Church by letter or by Christian experience, we invite you two to come down the aisle, come forward to these deacons who will welcome you warmly and greet you into the body of Christ. As the choir sings, we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. Whomsoever will, let him or her come. Very 